Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Aftermath series. Let us waste no time at all and dive right into this week's episode of Critical Role. Now of course we start off with combat! Right off the bat with the Bodak and a few Will-O-Wisps. Now overall the fight didn't go too poorly, but it could have been absolutely devastating because Bo did fail her save against the Bodak and she was immediately dropped to zero hit points. But Ford and Yasha quickly rushed to her aid, Ford casting Lay on Hands healing her up a, a little bit, two hit points, nothing crazy, and then Yasha comes in and heals her for like 15 or something hit points maybe it was 12 15 somewhere around there but it was definitely a lot more than ford but it wasn't a competition viridian eventually joined the fray and she was surprised to see this bodak or specter as she called it so far south normally they reside up in the ruins eventually they were able to defeat the bodak and the will-o-wisps with the help of veth's brenato's voltaic bolt a spell, I believe, that she created. It simply electrifies her arrow and causes a bit of lightning damage upon impact. And then Ford was able to finish off this Bodak once and for all with a very powerful Banishing Smite. Once it was all said and done, the party continued forward towards Vokodo's lair. But Bo was definitely out of it and she asked Yasha if she would carry her. And Yasha, of course, happily obliged. As the party continued through this color-drained, dark part of the jungle, eventually they reached its end. And we're back into the regular, super hot, humid, bugs everywhere, pretty normal part of the jungle. The party began to be swarmed by these very annoying mosquitoes. And after a failed con save by Jester, she eventually started feeling a bit, uh, sick. Which then prompted the party to take a rest before they continued their journey. Ford used Lay on Hands to cure Jester of this illness, and then they had a little bit of a conversation about the Traveler. Ford expresses his unease with the Traveler and what he's asking Jester to do. And Jester was explaining how the Traveler doesn't really want to be a god, but then Ford was saying that the Traveler sending Jester makes signals because, sure, okay, the Traveler doesn't want to be a god, but then why does he want to gather all of his followers in one place? Does he maybe want to actually ascend to full godhood and he's just lying to Jester? We really don't know, but now that seed has been planted into Jester's mind, and maybe she'll have something to think about as Traveler Khan rapidly approaches. Caduceus also takes this downtime to commune with the Wild Mother, and we got three very strong confirmations with this commune. Vokodo is watching them, the Mist does have memory-altering capabilities, and Caduceus does have the power to restore the memories that were lost. Towards the end of this rest, the party heard rustling in the trees nearby. The party silences themselves and Caleb casts Major Image to cover them with various jungle foliage. And out from the tree line comes a Dragloth, a creature not typically native to jungles. It seemed to be running from something, it looked panicked. And then following it, we see the massive jaws of a T-Rex. The T-Rex quickly and easily absolutely destroyed this Dragloth. And I, for one, really wanted a fight to break out between the Mighty Nine and the T-Rex because that just would have been so absolutely iconic and legendary. But through clever use of Thaumaturgy and the use of Major Image, the T-Rex could not find the Mighty Nine and went on its merry way. After a little bit more traveling, the party finally reaches the mountain. Before entering, Viridian warns the party that there are toxic fumes within and they must quickly go past it to reach the breathable water. Yes, that's right, the water in this mountain is breathable. Just, uh, just another layer to the mystery of this island. 
the party enters the mountain and they have to hold their breath to protect themselves from the toxic fumes. And then they must navigate, rolling dexterity checks so that they don't trip and fall and lose their breath. A few of them do, and Caduceus, unfortunately, he just seems to be really unlucky with this island. Unfortunately, he loses his breath and becomes poisoned, as the party eventually does reach the breathable water, and they are able to breathe, finally. Traveling in these now underwater tunnels, the party sees a mysterious glowing flower. Viridian tells the party that these flowers are native to the fire plane, and it's best not to touch them or disturb them. After a few minutes of traveling, Veth, Jester, and Yasha fail a wisdom saving throw where they feel compelled. They feel like they must continue forward at a faster pace. They must reach the end of this tunnel where Vokoda resides. And so they take the lead and the rest of the party must quickly follow suit. And eventually, the party does reach Vokodo's chamber, where Vokodo asks them to offer something in return for the party being able to have Traveler Khan on this island. As the party begins to offer up trivial items such as gold, a few of the members notice that when they throw these items into the air, these dark tendrils reach down from above and snatch them out of the water and they look up and they see a shadowy figure on the ceiling eventually after vokodo is unsatisfied with the gifts the party is giving him he comes down and then we see vokodo for what he really is a markov but the party doesn't know it at this time this massive almost kraken like squid like entity that just loves to collect shiny things and he places them all on his back where we see his massive collection of items and honestly i didn't expect to see vokodo this early i thought it might be a couple episodes but nope here we are and there is vokodo vokodo's impatience was growing as the water began to heat up and the party felt pressured to give greater offerings to vokodo Ford cleverly offered up Star Razor, which Vokodo happily accepted. Caleb gave up his necklace that hides him from scrying capabilities. That is absolutely huge. And Vokodo, again, happily accepts that offering. So we have Ford giving up his legendary sword, and Caleb giving up the one necklace he needs to protect himself from the people who likely want to kill him. And then Bo offers up some nice drugs. And with a natural 20 persuasion check, Vokodo accepts the gift. Yasha gives up Skin Gorger, and then Veth gives up the Dagger of Denial. The party definitely gave up some pretty serious items here, except for Ford, I guess, since he can just summon it back, which might present some problems in itself, because I would assume that Vokodo keeps track of everything in his possession, and if Ford decides to summon the Star Razor, Vokoda will probably take notice and be very pissed off. But it's pretty clear that down the line, eventually the party's gonna have to kill Vokodo and they'll get all of their items back, along with all of the other things in Vokodo's possession. But for the time being, Vokodo is satisfied and is willing to let the party host Traveler Khan here in exchange for the possibly hundreds of followers of the Traveler offering up something to Vokodo upon their arrival. The party then leaves Vokodo's chamber a bit shaken, specifically Viridian, since that could have gone very poorly, very quickly, but eventually the party makes their way back up the winding tunnel, they make their way through the toxic fumes, and are brought back into the jungle. However, they do decide to rest in the mouth of the cave, since they have had quite a hectic day. And as the party and Viridian are winding down within the dome, they begin their nightly ritual of saying their names, a fact about themselves, their parents' names. And then Caduceus decides to subtly cast Greater Restoration on Viridian. Jester notices this and tries to distract Viridian with a wonderful song. But Caduceus fails a sleight of hand check and Viridian catches him trying to do it. Caduceus reassures her that this is just a part of the ritual and quickly goes to cast it, 
Viridian is too slow to avoid the spell, and her memory is restored. There is a moment where she closes her eyes and you could see the, the eye movement behind her lids, her fingers digging into the ground as all of her memories come flooding back to her. She opens her eyes and looks at the party, apologizes to them, says that Vokodo must be stopped. He can't be allowed to continue doing what he's doing, taking advantage of people, wiping their memories, wiping away who they were. The party asks her, where are you from? Who are you? Viridian looks at them all once more and says, I'm from Tal'Dori. I'm not Viridian. My name is Vilia. And that is where Matt decided to end the episode, and what an absolute bombshell of a drop that is, because as we all know, Vilia is Keyleth's mother, and the reaction of the cast figuring this out was amazing. I went back and watched it at least a dozen times. It just, it was just such a, a sight to behold. So amazing. I could just feel, I could feel the energy of the critters in the chat, and then on Twitter, Twitter was blowing up, we got Critical Role trending, it was absolute chaos. What an amazing moment from the legendary Matthew Mercer, who said he's been planning this since before Campaign 1 or around Campaign 1. Amazing. Matthew really does know how to play the long game. But, with all of that being said, we are going to wrap up. Let me know all of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions after that massive drop. It was so amazing, I can't say it enough. As always, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your weekend, and I will see you all next week.